suggests a Lennox Gastaut syndrome is a syndrome, meaning it's a constellation of symptoms that occurs the same and looks the same amongst the people who have it. This means kids or adults with Lennox Gastaut syndrome are going to have a few things in common, irrespective of the ideology. It means the cause of Lennox Gastaut syndrome for everyone does not have to be the same, but the presentation is going to look the same. And it's going to look like this. You're going to have multiple different seizure types, right? You're going to have atonic seizures, tonic seizures, myoclonic seizures, generalized tonic clonic seizures. You can even have focal seizures with bilateral tonic clonics. You're also going to have behavioral symptoms such as regression. You can have developmental delays. Uh, some kids with Lennox Gastor are nonverbal, some are not. So you'll have the behavioral manifestations along with the different types of seizures. And then lastly, you have the EEG. The EEG generally shows all of these seizures. However, there is a classic pattern we look for on EEG. This is from the Epilepsy Foundation. As you can see up top, that is a nocturnal tonic seizures. Tonic seizures will have the spike wave discharge as well as electrodecrement. But the bottom is what I'm most interested in. This is what's very common in Lennox Gusto syndrome patient, or Lennox Gusto syndrome patient, excuse me. And it is a two hertz generalized spike wave discharge. This can even be a one hertz slow spike wave discharge, but this spike wave discharge is what you see interictally or in between seizure events in patients with Lennox Gastaut syndrome. Of course, the cause also depends between person to person. Some people have Lennox Gastaut syndrome because it's due to a genetic cause. Some people it's structural, like tuberous sclerosis. Um, for some people it's unknown. I could make a series about it, so if there's interest, let me know.